Gareth says, watching Flurn for over two years has greatly improved my skill level, my confidence, and my ability to create art. Scott says, Flurn showed me I was really not doing that great of a job retouching my photos. Flurn's given me a huge box of 256 crayons that replaced the 16 that I was using. Natasha says she appreciates the friendly, real-world, enthusiastic approach to teaching and community that we present. Thanks, Natasha. Julian says, my favorite moment was when I won my first contest. It was so awesome. I was so happy I danced, jumped, screamed, called my dad, my mom, my girlfriend, and best friend. I couldn't believe it. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on the all new, amazingly updated and beautiful Flurn.com. This week is all about you guys. This is Fan Appreciation Week. Every day we're gonna be releasing a new episode that's based on your images that you guys submitted. Today's episode is brought to you by Jeff. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make a vacation photo look really cool, give it a vintage feel, and add some texture to it in Photoshop. So here's our image from Jeff, and we're gonna be applying a couple of textures on to this image. So let's go ahead and, I've got these textures open. Let's go ahead and use our move tool. I'm gonna to hold shift and click and drag from one image to the other to apply these textures onto our image from Jeff. Now we're actually providing you guys these images. All you have to do is go to this episode on flurn.com and you can actually download both of these images so you can use them on your images. And if you guys want a large pack, just go to our paper texture pack, which includes hundreds of these sample textures for adding really cool effects to images. All right, so we're gonna use those. Let's go ahead and shift click the two of those and group them together. I'm gonna go double click there and we're gonna call this texture. All right, now we're gonna make this invisible. So what we're doing with this is we wanna give it a little bit of a vintage feel and a lot of that's gonna come with coloring and some contrast as well as the texture we're gonna to add to it. So let's go ahead and start off with coloring and kinda of get a good idea for what we can do to this image. And when you're using coloring to make an image vintage, I find the best way is to go to your adjustment layers and create a, where is it? A gradient map adjustment layer. Now if you guys have never used a gradient map adjustment layer, basically how this works You've got a gradient map. We're gonna click here right on the gradient. Okay, and we've got on the left side here, this is gonna represent your darks. So your darks are gonna be this color. And you can see in this case, that's actually what's happening. The darks in my image are now this like kind of yellow color. On the right over here, this is representing our lights. And in this case, it's white. And then anything in between is just kind of fade between the two. So if I click right here on one of these colors, I can move these sliders around. I can introduce new colors if I'd like by just clicking here and then let's say I wanna add a red, I could do that too and you get some really cool effects like this. It kinda looks like fire in her hair. It's cool. Anyway, we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna take our white point right now and to give it a vintage effect, I'm gonna click on my color and I'm gonna give it like a really nice, kinda like bright yellow. Something right about there because vintage photos, they tend to be like a little bit more sepia. Well, we're, we're doing sepia. You can do vintage however you want but that's what we're doing in this episode. So that's our light point. Now our dark point, we're gonna make quite a bit darker than this. So I'm gonna click on my color here again. We're gonna click pretty much in the same color range and I wanna go right down here to these darks. So I'm not going all the way to black because you can see that pretty much takes all the color out. We're just gonna give it a, some brown, just like that. Let's hit okay and then okay right there. Very cool. So you can already see that gives the image a lot more of a vintage feel to it. And you can choose your colors however you'd like to get your own effect. I'm gonna lower the opacity of this layer just a little bit, which is gonna allow some of the original color to come through. Not a ton, but just a little bit so it's not like totally color graded. All right, so that's a really good start for this image. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and add a texture to it. So let's go ahead and we're gonna open our texture window and I've got my gradient map. We're gonna start with this guy here. All right, I wanted to cover the entire image. So I'm gonna hit Command T and then we're gonna stretch this out holding Shift and Option. There we go. Now, I want this actually, these little spots and everything like that, I want them to lighten our image. I don't wanna make our image darker with this texture. I'm gonna make the image darker with this texture. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command I, which inverts this texture. So now what was dark became light and what was light became dark. Okay, so now that we've inverted, I can change this to a blending mode, something like screen, or you could change it to something like lighten as well, but I'm gonna choose screen. And then you can see it's adding this texture and it's basically making all the dark parts of this texture invisible. 
Now, if it's too much texture, you can always adjust these layers, which is what I'm going to do right now. And I'm going to do it by using a levels adjustment. So Command L or Control L will bring a levels adjustment layer. And here, the best thing to do is just grab the center slider. And if I pull it to the right, you're going to see the texture is going to basically become less and less visible. If I pull it to the left, the texture is going to be more and more visible. And the reason is because it's, it's making my actual layer either lighter or darker. And because I've got a screen adjustment layer set, what it's doing is the darker my layer gets, that those areas are not going to be visible. So we're going to hit OK there. We can kind of see now this is like our before and our after. All right, really cool. Let's just go ahead and do something similar here with this texture. Now this guy, I'm going to change this from normal down to multiply. And that's going to make these areas darker. So if you want a texture to make things lighter, use an adjustment layer like screen or lighten. If you want to darken, use darken or multiply. But again, in my opinion, this is it's like too much right now. I need like these lighter areas, I want those to disappear. I just want these cracks to show up. So again, I'm going to hit Command or Control L, and we're going to bring up levels. And then I'm going to take my white point and just kind of drag this to the left a little bit. There we go. Something like that. All right. There we go. That looks pretty good. So you can see when I adjust my levels, like it brought in a bit of saturation too. Like this is a little bit more saturated, and this guy actually looks a little bit more blue. And that's a problem we're going to run into because we've already colored the entire image. So let's just say I, I put this over there. I can put a layer mask on it and paint black. And these are just two textures. You could use your own textures. You could duplicate them, stretch them around, do really whatever you want with these textures. I'm just kind of sticking them here for the time being. OK. Now, because this texture right here is a little bit more, it's cooler, right? It's not as warm as the rest of this image. And this one is a little bit too saturated. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring my gradient map above everything. And that's going to color these textures as well, because the gradient map colors everything. So let's go ahead and just click it and drag it above. There we go. And you can see there's a before and the after there. It's just going to make sure that it's the same color, basically, same color range as everything else. Now, your texture layer, this one, I can lower the opacity if I want to and things like that. All right, really cool. So if you wanted to, you could be totally done here. But I don't want to be done. I want to do some more adjustments. So I'm going to create a new layer above my background. I'm keeping my gradient map on the very top because it's coloring my entire image. So no matter what, even if I were to grab a brush tool and I start painting green on this image, there we go. Without this layer, look how bright green that is. But the gradient map is going to color it. So it's going to make it seem like it's a little bit more, you know, should actually fit into this image. So let's go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to group that layer with itself. And we'll just double click and we'll call this Adjustments. All right. And here, we're going to make a Levels Adjustment layer. So let's go down to Levels. Oops, clicked on the wrong one. All right. There we are, Levels. And I want to take my black point and bring this up. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it look like it's a little bit blown out. Basically, this takes the, the darkest point in your image, and it makes it lighter. So if I kept going, you could see that's basically what it's going to do is make it lighter and lighter and lighter. All right, let's bring it to right about there. I'm going to hit Command-I on the layer mask. And then I'm going to use my gradient tool and paint with a foreground to transparent gradient. So we've got a linear gradient. We're clicking on foreground to transparent here. And I'm going to go white to transparent. So we've got a black layer mask, which means that adjustment layer is not visible. And then what I'm going to do, let's just try clicking from the top left there, just like that. And it gives it that like cool faded effect, right? Something like that. There we go. And you can go totally go crazy with this. Do whatever you want with it. But it's giving that like, you know, in a vintage photo or an old photo, you'll just kind of things just fade away into white. Like, you know, after time, it's just like, OK, there's not much detail in there. All right, so that's looking pretty cool. A little bit more on the vintage side. And if you don't want that to be visible in certain areas, just use your brush tool and paint black where you don't want it to be visible and white where you do want it to be visible. It's as simple as that. I'm going to do another one of those. Let's go to Levels Adjustment Layer now. And I'm going to make things a little bit darker. This is like the kind of you know the, the burning, um, <laughs> making this area a little darker. So I'm going to hit Command-I on that layer mask. And then I'm just going to paint white in a couple of these areas. There we go, right here on our subject. And that's just going to make it look like you know some spots or something like that hit this image. And this is kind of the key to making an image look 
look old. It's just like how you know imperfect can I make this image look? And that's why I'm kind of like adding all these little imperfections to this. OK, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to give this image a border. So let's go to our marquee selection tool. We're going to go to a regular, rec a regular marquee, uh, rectangular marquee, maybe. And let's go ahead and start a selection up top there. And I'm going to drag it, drag it all the way down to the bottom. There we go. So it's kind of staying right inside of the border of our image. Now, I'm actually I'm going to hit Shift, Delete, and I'm going to fill this with white. That's going to fill the inside. So let's inverse our selection first. Let's go to Select, and then down here to Inverse. And now it's just selecting that border. Shift, Delete, and fill with white. But you can see it's not white, right? And the reason it's not white is because our gradient map is on top of everything. If I take my gradient map off, this is what is visible. So I don't have to worry about matching color with every one of these steps, because I just keep my gradient map on top of everything, then it takes care of that, which is really, really nice. I can just use white and black and things like that, and it's going to automatically convert those colors for me. OK, so we've got a little border on there. I'm going to add, you know what, I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate that border, and then we're going to give it a Gaussian blur, just to like make that border a little bit softer, because I find that you know, generally you don't want a border that's too sharp, especially with these old photos. So basically, I just duplicated it and gave it a little bit of a blur. There we go. So you can kind of see that before and after there. All right, this is looking really good. Now, there are only a couple more steps left. And these are actually going to be applied to my base image. Uh, older photos, a lot of the time, they're going to have some grain in them, and they're going to be kind of blurry. So I want to make sure I add both of those things to my original image. So you can either choose to use your background layer or create a duplicate of your background layer. In this case, I'm going to create a duplicate. I like working on duplicates because I always like the opportunity to go back to my original layer just as it was. So I'm going to hit Command J on the background. And then I'm going to right click here, and I'm going to convert this to a smart object. Now, the reason I'm going to convert to a smart object is so I can use smart filters. I'll show you that in a second. It's really, really cool. So just right click and go to convert to smart object. Nothing pretty much changes. You won't, you, if you did that by on accident, nothing would happen to your image. It's totally OK. But a smart object that basically stores that file somewhere else, and you can reference it. So there are a lot of amazing things you can do with smart objects. Small, smart filters are just one of those. So let's go ahead and see what we can do. I'm going to just click on my filter. We're going to go to Blur. And then I'm going to go ahead down here to Gaussian Blur. And we're going to give this image a little bit of a blur. Not too much, something like four pixels and hit OK. There we go. Now, the great thing about these smart filters is I can turn these off and on. Check that out. So I can zoom in. Here's our subject here. I can turn this filter off and on even after I applied it. I can also double click right here, and I can change how much of a blur she's actually going to get, which is really nice. I can stack these as well, and that's what we're going to do with our noise. So. Here on our background copy, I'm going to go to Filter. We're going to go down to Noise, and I'm going to go to Add Noise. There we go. And let's see. We can choose the amount of noise we actually want to add, like how visible it's actually going to be. Monochromatic will make it black and white. In this case, it doesn't really matter, because we do have the uh, gradient map adjustment layer, which is kind of changing the colors. And you can change from Uniform or Gaussian. In this case, we're going to do Uniform and hit OK. So there we go. Really zoomed in, we start to see like this does look like an old photo. And I can take those two off, and you can see how sharp it was before. And there's the after. So obviously, if we were printing this out, I would probably use a little bit less noise. So you could just double click on your add noise there and lower the amount of noise that's actually, actually showing up. But zoomed out, you actually see that noise, and it, it really doesn't bother you. So let's turn those both off, and you can see it's it's a really good quality image. It's too good quality to look like it's old. So let's turn those both back on. And there we can see the change. It looks a little bit more like it's got that vintage feel to it. All right, let's zoom out. And uh, we're done, guys. And all these steps, you can use either some of them, all of them. You can add your own steps to the mix. These are just some examples of what you can do to create a vintage photo. So let's take a look at our, let me shift click all of these layers together and hit Command G. Let's take a look at our before and our after. Thanks so much for watching this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning how to turn your photos into a vintage style photo. Thanks to Jeff for submitting this image, and thank you to everyone for submitting your images for 
Fan Week. If you guys like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can receive updates and new episodes teaching you Photoshop and photography every single week. There's so much stuff I gotta say. <laughs> Leave us a comment right down below if there's anything you'd like to learn in our episodes because that's where we get the ideas to create these episodes for you. And be sure to share this with your friends. It'd mean a lot to us. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll flirt you later. Bye, everyone. Today's episode is brought to you by Jeff. Yeah. Jeff! Yeah. Jeff! Yeah. Jeff! Yeah. Jeff! Yeah. Jeff! Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. Jeff.